so we'll make a transition from the androids to biomass. And uh, your brain has to adjust accordingly, obviously. Uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, biomass thermochemical conversion to biofuels, modeling and simulations. So I'll introduce to you what biomass in general in the most strict sense of the term is, and what thermochemical conversion is, and of course the role that modeling and simulation plays for this. And also I'll introduce briefly to a product that we have developed at UCSD, which is San Diego Biomass Gasifier. It is a uh, simulation package which can handle most of these problems. The funding for this work comes from uh, partially from CSRO, and also a lot of the funding also comes from UC Discovery West Biofuels Program, uh, funded to a consortium of three UC campuses, UCSD, UC Berkeley, and UC Davis. Okay, what's a biomass? According to the, the federal statutes, it's any organic matter that is available on a renewable or recurring basis, including agricultural crops and trees, wood and wood wastes and residues, plants, grasses, residues, fibers, animal wastes, and other waste materials. So this includes all kinds of living organic matter, which has cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose in it. Okay, so based on that, the primary sources of biomass that we find around are either from the agriculture sector, the forestry, the urban waste, and of course, all the other energy crops that are, drawn, that are grown. Okay. Uh, that are grown uh, specifically for the purpose of making biofuels. And most of you may have heard about algae, which is lot which is talked about a lot these days. Uh, so this is a slide from, from the California Energy Commission reports, which shows the distribution of the biomass all around the state. And as you can see, we have about 35 million dry tons per year of biomass in the state, which is capable of producing about 507 trillion BTU per year. So California is a rich source of biomass. And most of it comes from the forest products, and the rest is and also from agriculture. So uh, how do we go from uh, biomass to biofuels? And we have, there are two traditional routes here. One is the biochemical conversion, which takes you from biomass to uh, the biofuels going through either sugars, that is you, either you ferment the, the biomass or you can use some chemicals to also process it. In this process, what happens is all the cellulogic material is converted to biofuels, but there's a lot of residue that comes out which contains lignin and hemicellulose. So this is not a very efficient process for conversion, but still it is very attractive because of uh, other reasons. The second process is the thermochemical conversion, which is the most popular one and which is most widely used. In this process, you take the biomass and reduce it to the basic molecules of CO and H2, that's carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And then from there onwards, you go on building, either you want biofuels or bio, different kind of chemicals or any other uh, basic items that you want to construct. Here I have uh, given the a DOE vision of an integrated biorefinery, which will, when, it, uh, when the dream is achieved, what we'll have is a combined process of biochemical and thermochemical. So the biochemical material will process, biochemical conversion will process the cellulogic material to the fuel products, and the remaining material will be processed through thermochemical conversion. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that thermochemical conversion is an essential process for going from biofuels to biomass, and we'll always have to deal with it. So it's, there is a lot, to, uh, there's a lot in stake to improve this process. 
Now, what is thermal conversion? Uh, most of you are familiar with it. It's just burning. Okay, if you just take some wood and burn it in the air, then it is combustion and it produces heat, which is of course not very useful. The second one is of course you take the thermal conversion, uh, take the take the biomass and burn it in partial air. That means there is not sufficient oxygen available. Under those conditions, it gasifies. You see smoke coming out, and that is the smoke contains CO2 and H2, and that's the synthesis gas which is the route for all the further biofuels or chemicals. And the final one is the pyrolysis or the hydrothermal processes, which are, uh, which are achieved at under high pressure conditions. Now, most of the, this is the most uh, desired route, the gasification route, because you generate synthesis gas, and from there you can generate any item that you want, any form, the biofuel in any form you want, whether you want it as a trans transportation fuel or whether you want it as biopower or bioelectricity or biodiesel, you can con generate anything that you like. Now all these process involves multi-phase flow because biomass is mostly solids to start with, so it involves solid particles handling. So to achieve this, uh, under UC Discovery West Biofuels, there is a research reactor, uh, which is about capacity of five tons per day at Woodlands Biomass Center in the Northern California. This was constructed in last two years. And uh, the core of this is that this 30 foot, uh, 30 feet high reactor, uh, which is a dual fluidized battery reactor. And this can generate biopower as well as syngas from biomass, which of course in this case here, mostly wood chips and almond cells. But this, is, this unit is capable of processing any other kind of biomass material. Okay, so what is the principle behind this? The principle behind this dual fluidized bed biomass gasification is that you have two reactors. One is the gasifier, one is combustor. So you feed the biomass into one of these gasifier units. The biomass comes in at 800 to 850 degrees centigrade. It devolatilizes, so the gases come out and the solid char remains in the reactor here, the gasifier. This process of gasification is an endothermic process. It requires energy. So what you do is you transfer some carrier solids which can carry heat, you know, high capacity solid particles which are moved from the combustor to this unit here. And they carry the heat and provide the heat here. From the top side, the unburnt char and the cooled solid particle come here. And in this section, the chars burnt at a higher temperature, so they generate energy about at 900 to 1000 degrees centigrade. And then this is the flue gas that comes out. The desired product of the syn gas comes out from this unit here. And that syn gas can be taken downstream and can be processed to generate biofuels. So that's the crux of this pyrox design. And this is, and uh, as you can see, there is a lot of solids movement here. You have to uh, transfer solids from un one unit to another unit. And those of you who are familiar with solids movement, they're extremely difficult to handle because, and I'll come to that why, that is the things there. So there's a lot of solid modeling involved in it. So the difficulties with these processes are, they're high temperature processes, about both the units are at, you know, above 850, 900 degrees centigrade. They're also, you cannot see anything through it. So you do not know what is happening inside the bed. All measurements that you can make are at the wall only. Uh, the flow is multi-phase. Also, the flow is multi-scale. Uh, th things happen at the particle level because the biomass, the chemistry happens at the particle level. The flow happens at the bed level, which is 30 feet high. So the scale is from one micron to 30 meter, um, I mean 30 feet, so it's about 10 meters. So these are some of the difficulties uh, involved with it. Uh, high temperature operations, hydrodynamics, there's chemistry, heat and mass transfer, all measurements at wall only, processes are multi-scale, and the flow is multi-phase flow. So with this complexity, you have to deal with in designing or operating, controlling these kind of units. 
And on top of that, we have no knowledge of particle distribution, temperature, species concentration, et cetera, inside the gasifier. So the only approach is modeling and simulation is the only rational guide for efficient operations and control in these kind of systems. Okay, so what is the current status of modeling and simulation? We have uh, a software in-house simulation package developed for from mathematical first principles. So this is done, a, it's a very rigorous model that we have here. Uh, I'm not going to show you any of the math in this presentation, but it's by writing down all the conservation laws and all the constitutive expressions for all the species, for high flow, the chemistry, heat and mass transfer, everything that goes into it. And this model has both Eulerian Eulerian and Eulerian Lagrangian capabilities. Eulerian Lagrangian capability is very rigorous, but it's only good for research purposes. Eulerian Eulerian capabilities, uh, they're good for applying to the industrial scale problems. So we, this software pack has both these capabilities. It is also open source, and some of it, the work is taken from the uh, DOE software package called MFIX. Simulations are complex. They give time-dependent information on pressure, temperature, composition, and velocity distributions everywhere in the reactors. A range of gasifier operating conditions have been simulated using this package. These simulations are currently used for gasifier design and control, but all these simulations consider flowing solids only. There is no, uh, you cannot simulate the solid deposition, deposition of the particles. Now this is very critical to the operations of these gasifiers because whenever the particles are flowing, there are bends and corners and the particles tend to deposit in those places. And once they deposit there, they can block the flow and the moment they block the flow, you have uh, shutdowns, you have high temperature spots in the, inside the bed, so there are a lot of safety issues involved with that. But this is the only simulation package which is trying to incorporate the satisfactory solids handling in the dense region, and this part of the work has been, this critical work has been supported by the CSRO grant. Now, it is critical for safe and efficient gasifier operation and troubleshooting. Now, why it is difficult to handle solids? Uh, that's because, and I'll come in the next slide, because solids uh, have a very, uh, they show very strange behavior and they flow through any of the uh, complex geometries. And currently we have 3D work is still under development right now. Okay, so, let me discuss the difficulties with solids uh, phase stress modeling in the dense region. When the solids flow through, you'll see in the gasifier, there'll be, there are regions where the particles are in contact with each other for a very long time, and then there are regions where particles are just flying, and they're colliding with each other. And then there are, there's an intermediate region where, where the particles collide as well as they remain in contact. So this part of the so, uh, these particles is, behaves like a solid. This part of the particle is like gas, and the intermediate is a liquid region. Now there are well-designed, uh, well-studied uh, theories for solid region, mostly applied in soil and geomechanics. In the gas region, you have theories which explain and model the situation very well, and that's based on the kinetic theory of the gases. But in the intermediate region, there is no, really there is no good theory available. And part of that comes because of the difficulty that this kind of phase transition that takes place in the multi-phase flow, uh, it is very difficult to account for the local shear rate. If we can account for that, then we can develop the simulation packages and largely because there are singularities in the equations that, that happen along these two lines. Now, there have been some recent developments uh, on trying to circumvent these problems by the French group, uh, and we have tried to incorporate that in the 2D flow simulations. So I'll show you some simulation results here. This is the simulations of a 2D gasifier and uh, idealized. 
what you have is uh, a column here there is a porous plate and this uh, color chart shows you that blue shows only uh, concentrated solids and the red region shows that it is just gas. So the porosity here is 1 and the porosity here is 0.5 concentrations. So as we start the flow the gas is going from below there is a plate here which supports all the solid particles. Oops. So in this case and the gravity is acting downwards. So in this case as the fluid is going from below you can see there are regions where there are no particles and these are traditionally known as bubbles and this causes a lot of mixing inside the bed and that is the that helps in uh, biomass gasification. Now when, when the, the bed is inclined at an angle of 20 degrees like in a down comer the, again the gas is going from below and you will see the gas is going from one side and there is a region here there is no movement of the particles at all. It does not come out very well on this one here you can just see just the blue thing but if you look at the velocity profiles then there is no flow in this region and all the uh, gas goes from this side. So there is a particle deposition there okay. Uh, so uh, that is the 2D and this is the this is a we have the exact flow model of the full gasifier here but what we need to do is implement the solid frictional stress in this 30 feet tall UC discovery gasifier. So I will just take this and oops. I'm just at the end and my time is up so